What's going on guys? Right on me teacher in the house and I'm here with the ADL Little Cup one week draft tourney semi-final match. Your Royal Bournemouth for Bombies are taking on the Las Vegas Vanilux and Coach Skinny Biscuit. This is a best of three Little Cup match where we cannot change our team so we have to rock with what we've got. So yeah, let's talk about his team shall we? He's, his the user of choice is Torchic. Typically a good speed boost in Mon does hit pretty hard. Uh, of course, particularly with Fire EMC, he doesn't get much in the way of attacks though, so it is fairly easy to predict what he's going to do. Uh, he'll protect every time he brings it in to get that speed boost and then try and hit me for a little bit of damage, which is cool. I'm okay with it. Um, I do have enough answers for it on my team. So yeah, it doesn't really like Intimidates at all because it has to boost it up otherwise, and it doesn't really have the best ways to boost it up. So yeah. Next up, he has my baby, of course, my baby mascot, Cutifly. Cutifly's broken, it's banned in Little Cup, mostly because Quiver Dance just ruins everything. Uh, Quiver Dance, Bug Buzz, Moon Blast, and um, Giga Drain just literally ruins everything. It's so stupidly broken. I do have one of the best answers to it, though, in Alola Grimer, so hopefully we can make that work, of course. Next up is Ghastly, which I do have to apologize, that one is the only non-HD sprite. For some reason, when I downloaded all of these sprites from Furrow Turret, which is where I got them from, um, there wasn't an HD Ghastly sprite in there. Um, I'm not sure why, but there wasn't. So yeah, I've just had to make do with a standard one from Showdown. And so I do apologize for that, but yeah. Either way, Ghastly, typically known for being Fairy MZ or Scarfed, uh, pretty fast. Pretty powerful, obviously stab with Shadow Ball and Sludge Bomb, hits a lot of things really hard, uh, does get some okay coverage and things like Dazzling Gleam, I believe it also gets Psychic, uh, I think it gets Energy Ball as well, it gets a lot of moves, it gets a lot of weird moves, uh, but yeah, pretty cool mod, so I do, it. obviously I know it comes. Star U, of course, very interesting mod, can be offensive or can be a bulky spinner, uh, he ran it offensive with Life Orb in this particular her series. Really cool Pokemon, does get things like Thunderbolt, of course. I don't know if it gets Psychic, I know Starmie gets it. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if uh, Staryu gets it. But yeah, typically, typically a very, very hard hitting spinner. Next up is Sandile, very interesting mon. Obviously, Ground Dark type being immuni an immunity for my Abra Stab, uh, which is a bit annoying. Uh, can be Intimidate, can be a Moxie Sweeper, much like Crocodile, of course. Uh, but it's pretty much only really there to stop my Abra from sweeping and even then it doesn't necessarily do it because Abra gets things like Dazzling Gleam. Alright, next up is Woobat. Woobat's kind of a weird Pokemon to me but does get Simple Carmine which buffs up its stats twice as fast. Uh, can be strong, can be like Carmine store power, gets screens, uh, does get hit, air slash. Pretty interesting one, obviously it comes. And Lotad, he calls it Brotad. He pretty much brought it for the memes. Um, he didn't actually bring it to this series, so yeah, Lotad's there. It's a Rainmon, basically. Uh, it just is a Rain Sweeper if you have Rain, but as you can see from this team, Rain is not a thing. So, let's talk about my team. First, you can probably guess it's going to be Resident Sleeper the Abra. Running Choice Scarf this time, I ran for MZ last time, but I need the Scarf because the Choice Scarf, with my speed investment, will allow me to guarantee speed tie with the Torchic, um, which is important. Um, it also allows me to guarantee speed tie with the Cutifly, uh, which is extremely important because Hidden Power Fire or Psychic can two-shot. Cutifly inevitably is going to run Focus Sash to try and get up Webs or Quiver Dance. Um, so yeah, I need to be able to two-shot it and need to be able to guarantee to get two hits off on it, and having Choice Scarf on Abra is a good way to do it. Next up, coming back again for another match is going to be Magneto, the Magnemite. Again, we're running the same set as last time, running Choice Scarf. Uh, Scarf is 100% worth it um, in this particular case. Again, much like Abra, I need to be able to speed tie. So uh, with this spread, I speed tie with the Torchic at plus one, and I can potentially hit the Cutifly incredibly hard. Flash Cannon one-shots it, Thunderbolt hits it hard. Ball switch, Hidden Power Ice. Hidden Power Ice is there for Sandal in case he tries switching it in, which you're never going to be too surprised to see it. Uh, Hidden Power Ice actually two shots Sandal unless it's a Violet, unless it's for like fully spadef. So yeah, Magnemite's pretty solid in this matchup. I quite like Magnemite a lot, so long as I can get rid of that Sandal and the, potentially the Torchic. 
Next up, also making his return, is going to be he, Rick Grimes, the uh, Lowland Grimer. Again, fairly standard set. Berry Juice this time instead of a Violite. Poison Touch uh, for that additional Poison Chance. Shadow Sneak, Poison Jab, Knock Off is normal. I'm actually running Stone Edge though, because Stone Edge hits that Torchic and it hits the Q to Fly incredibly hard. It also hits the Woobat if I try and catch it on the Switch. We're running a fairly defensive spread though. Uh, we are running the high attack and we're running high spadef with a spadef boosting nature. Um, this means that I can live two hits from the Q to fly, uh, unless it's plus one. Uh, but it's unlikely to be able to set it up because a poison jab plus a shadow sneak guaranteed kills. Uh, even through the focus sash of course. Uh, if I poison jab actually and get it down to its sash and poison it, I actually kill it in one turn. So, And he never kills me with one hit because of the extra spadef investment. Uh, shout outs to Axo for making me change this, by the way, uh, because Axo kind of made me realize that I need Spadef on it because I originally ran ran uh, fully attack minded. But yeah, I ran a bit of Spadef on it this time around. Uh, next up, making its debut is going to be Nargi the Litten. Uh, running a Violet Intimidate. Um, his team doesn't really appreciate Intimidate. I couldn't really bring Snowball to this match, so uh, Litten came instead. Fake out, obviously, for free chip damage. Flame charge to get some speed. If I can get a flame charge up before Cutify gets a buff, I actually then outspeed the Cutify. Crunch is there for Ghastly and Wubat. You turn a pivot out if I need to. Running max speed, a uh, bit of attack and a little bit of defense. A little bit of defense just allows me to hit, live a hit from Torchic and also allows me to live an earthquake from Sand Oil. So relatively important for me, of course. Uh, and this set is kind of cool. I like this set quite a lot. It's fairly similar to a set that I've run on Incineroar before, except I ran Flare Blitz instead of Flame Charge. Uh, but Flame Charge is a little bit better for Little Cup, in my understanding. Next up, the last returning mod is going to be the Mini Defogger, of course. Uh, it's Peplup. We're actually running Defiant this week because of Sticky Webs. Uh, if if I take the stat drop, the speed drop, I get plus two attack. So we're actually running Physical Peplup with max HP and or max attack rather, and as high HP as I can go. Drill Pack Waterfall for her damage, Defog of course to get rid of hazards, and Stealth Rock to set my own hazards. Fairly standard other than being physical, but it's a pretty cool set. Uh, I'm really excited. I was really excited to try this one out. And last but by no means least, I've nicknamed this Dratini Exo Made Me because I originally had Snubble here to have an Intimidate Core, um, but Exo was like, nah, but you need, you need, <laughs> you need um, um, Dratini because after a Dragon Dance, um, you can pretty much revenge kill his whole team. So I was like, sure, okay, I believe you, uh, Exo, which you know, sometimes it's always cool to be able to have someone help. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, shout out to Exo, of course. He's a better Little Cup player than I am. He doesn't play a lot of LC either, but he's better at it than me. So, uh, yeah. I brought Dratini instead of Snowball. Pretty much max attack, as high speed as I can go, and the rest of the EVs I put in HP. So, yeah. Pretty cool. That's going to be the team. This is, of course, going to be a best of three series, so I'm going to pause the video here, and then I'll take you through the matches. So, see you in a bit. Alright guys, we are back here with the matches where your Royal Bomber for Bombies are taking on Skinny Biscuit and the Las Vegas Vanaluxes. Let's have some fun. We do see here the team we expected, of course, and no low turn. So, let's get into the games. So, he leads off with Cutifly as expected and I lead off with Litten. Um, I actually made a mistake here turn 1 because I completely forgot about Shield Dust um, preventing Flinch Chance. I only thought it prevented Status. Uh, I made a misplay here, so I actually clicked Fake Out Turn 1. Instead of Flame Charles, which is what I should have gone for, I actually ended up clicking it this turn, uh, as he switches into Staryu, which, not great for us. Uh, Staryu actually puts in way too much work against this, uh, against Litten. So I do U-Turn out, which you see, we do a lot of damage here. As I do go into my uh, Piplup to get the Defiant Boost, as we do see the Hydro Pump. And at this point, we see Life Orb Staryu, which is rather unusual to me. But it's pretty cool nonetheless. Now, I took a gamble here, which was completely unnecessary. So, I knew that Staryu gets Thunderbolt, but I kind of thought to myself, would Skinny Biscuit bring it? Now, at this point, you should always assume that they have it, and then just play safer, but I decided just to be a little aggressive here. Uh, which turns out to be a mistake, because you can see my Piplup goes down. 
So I go into Abra next, thinking that I outspeed, forgetting that Magic Guard doesn't prevent Sticky Web, so Hydro Pump kills my Abra. So you can kind of see where this is going. I'm getting a little bit tilted at this point, because I'm making misplay after misplay. Uh, we do go for the Shadow Sneak here. A Poison Touch does proc on the Sandar, which is kind of cool. Uh, but ultimately, I don't get a lot of value for it. As I switch into Dratini on his Stealth Rock, which is nice for me. Uh, does mean I get the poison damage. As you see, that Earthquake does so much damage, and I go for the Dragon Dance. Uh, at this point, I misplayed again, because uh, I could have potentially lost had I not E-speeded. But I E-speeded anyway, and then I realize that Ghastly gets Dazzling Game too late, and then goes ahead and kills my Dratini. So in comes Grimer next. The knockoff actually guaranteed kills that thing. But he actually goes into Woobat and gives me that because I crit the knockoff. I'm not 100% sure that crit mattered, to be honest. Um, I feel like knockoff would have killed anyway. But I can't 100% guarantee that. Um, but either way, the Woobat's gone, which is cool. Grimer put in some work. Uh, but here comes the Torchic, which is going to protect. Um, so I just knock off again. I don't show that I have Stone Edge. Um, as he turns out to be Fire EMZ. And he actually crits me, which is incredibly unfortunate because I actually would have lived the uh, Inferno Overdrive had he not crit me. It would have been close though, it would have been a roll, but the crit just ruined me, unfortunately. So yeah, uh, that was an unfortunate situation. So I do go into Litten here, get the Intimidate off to weaken him as he goes back into Staryu. I go for the Fake Out, pick up the Free Kill, why not? So now in comes the Q to fly. Now here comes the Moonblast, which you see does nothing. And I just click Flame Charge and one shot the Q to fly. So we're coming back in this game. We're okay here. Uh, unfortunately, there's Ghastly is Scarfed. So as you see, he um, Shadow Ball kills my Litten. And he Shadow Balls again to take me really low. And, <coughs> and we do actually Thunderbolt kill the Ghastly. As we see the Torchic, and unfortunately... We min roll here, so we actually don't kill the Torchic, which was incredibly unlucky. So he takes game number one. I'm a little bit tilted because he takes game number one from me. So let's go to game number two. Now I had to accidentally play this a little bit because when I first um, loaded this match up, for some reason it had the teams the wrong side. Uh, I wanted to be on the left. So let's go this match. He leads Staryu, I lead Litten again. So this is a bad lead matchup for me. Uh, but he does actually switch to Ghastly on the fake out, which was a good play on his end. And we goes for Shadow Ball on Nargi. But I do get a Flame Charge off to try and see if I can outspeed it. And at this point, we confirm that the Ghastly is Scarf. Uh, so now I can just freely go into Alone and Grimer though. As I do go for Knock Off, get rid of this thing's leftovers. And we get the Poison Touch on the Sand Isle again. Which was pretty funny. But yeah, we switch into Magneto here because I knew I lived the hit thanks to Sturdy. And I'm free to click whatever I want, so I click Flash Cannon here, here because Flash Cannon was the best play against his team. And here we go with the Torchic again. I Flash Cannon again because of course I'm Scarf, I can't hit anything else. And I just freely get some damage off. I do not mind this, as we see the Substitute, which was very strange to me. Uh, as it, He does now of course outspeed me at plus two, and he goes for a Hidden Power, which was a little bit strange. I'm not sure what he was Hidden Power for. But we do see that he was actually super effective on my Peplup, which I think he's Hidden Power Grass based on that, but he could be Hidden Power Electric. Um, he does actually predict my, my Waterfall and go into Staryu. So I switch out into Grimer, which is Spadath, so I take um, the Thunderbolt comfortably. He misses his Hydro, which is unlucky, and Poison Jab picks up the kill because he's not a Violet. So now he goes into Cutifly here. And he goes for Sticky Web. Now I can freely Stone Edge into Shadow Sneak and the Cuter Fly goes down. Here comes the Torchic now which is going to protect as always to get his speed boost. But I'm fairly sure Shadow Sneak kills. Uh, and unfortunately I misplay because the Shadow Sneak doesn't kill. But we do clack, snag the Poison Touch as he Inferno Overdrive kills my Grimer again. And the Torchic goes down. In comes the Woobat. So I go into my Dratini here trying to be a little bit cocky. Get a bit aggressive here. As I just straight up go for Heck Outrage instead of Dragon Dance. Uh, which was a fairly bad play on my end to be honest. Uh, but we do actually kill the Woobat regardless. As he doesn't manage to kill me with plus 2 Psychic. And here comes the Scarf Ghastly with Shadow Ball. He's locked into it at this point. Now because I'm a Violite I know I live another Shadow Ball. So I can freely click Defog here. Now the reason I click Defog is so my Scarf Abra can come in. And click Psychic to win this match. Because he doesn't know that I'm Scarf, he did now, as he found out the hard way, so his Ghastly goes down. 
So, we are into the deciding match, and here we go. This match was rather anticlimactic, if I'm honest, but I'm not going to spoil too much further than that. So, here we go. I lead Magnemite this time as he leads the Wubat, which is a terrible lead for him as he then switches into Sandile. I freely click Flash Cannon because I know his leftovers and doesn't take this very well. And I can just spam Flash Cannon for as long as I like. We do get the crit here, which was incredibly lucky, uh, as he does protect to get his speed boost. But it's not enough, because I still outspeed and I kill the Torchic. Good start for us. He goes back into Wubat. I just click Flash Cannon again, get some damage off. Don't mind me. And I just click it again because I need as much damage as possible as he does show the roost. Which is fine. I click flash cannon one more time to see if he goes for it again as we do see the light screen. So at this point I'm thinking my Alolan Grimer beats this. So I'm just going to go switch it in on the roost as he does switch into Sandile on my stone edge. Which the Sandile does unfortunately live but he's in range for a shadow sneak to kill. So again... We're in a good position here as he does go to Staryu. He connects the Hydra Pump this time, which doesn't kill, but procs my Berry Juice, puts me back at full health. And I knock off, take a Life Orb away from him, and put him in Shadow Sneak range. So Staryu goes down. We're looking good here. As he goes into Ghastly next, as he does actually Willow with me. Interesting move on it, but knock off still kills because Ghastly took 200% if I wasn't burned. So yeah. As he goes into Cue to Fly here, as he thinks he can set up on me with the Quiver Dance. Little does he know, Poison Jab does a shed load to it and puts him in Shadow Sneak range. So the Cue to Fly has gone down. Alone and Grimer's just killing everything here. As we do see, he tries to roost all on me, but that's fine. I get a Stone Edge off, no real reason not to. And then I just decide, if he's going to Calm Mind on me, I'm going to knock off, get rid of this thing's item, which was a Violate, as you can see. And then, at this point, I Shadow Sneak to see if I can pick up the kill. I don't, so he roosts on me. So at this point, I figured, well, there's no point trying to kill it with a burned Grimer. Let's go into my Litten. Get the Intimidate off as he roosts back to full, which is fine. I can fake out here for free damage. He can't do anything about it. And then at this point, I Flame Charge. The reason I Flame Charge was to gauge the damage output. And then I can Crunch because I'm guaranteed in range to kill. And end the game. So... We took the series versus Skinny Biscuit two games to one after a pretty bad game one from my end. And the result for this means that I get to play my good friend Exo Stomp in the final. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are as well. At this point, we haven't actually played the match yet. Uh, we play the match on the Wednesday of this week. Which is kind of funny because it's a one week tournament and we're over in three days. But yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to go and prep for that match. Hope you're going to cheer me on, guys. If you're cheering for Exo, that's fine too. Exo's a dope guy, so I have no problem with that. I believe Exo is going to be streaming his matches, so I am going to link his stream down below. So, yeah. Good luck, of course, Exo. Thank you for inviting me here. But, yeah. Thank you, Skinny Biscuit, for the games, dude. Uh, that was a pretty rough series for you at the end there. But, yeah, it happens, dude. That's Pokemon for you. But anyhow, I'm going to get on out of here before I keep rambling. My name is Ribombi Teacher. I'm your coach of the Royal Bournemouth Ribombies. Stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.